Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. This is Jen with Jen's Den Art, and I am here today to paint with you. Please excuse my wires that I have running across my screen. Say hello when you get here. Let me find me on my on my screen. We we are going to paint today. Of course we're going to paint today, right? That's just what we do. That's what we do on New Technique Wednesdays. Say hello when you get here. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Hello, Michael. Can y'all hear my heater running? It's like 25 degrees outside. So we got the heater running. We are... We're going to paint today, and this is what we're going to do. So this, this is kind of a new technique for a lot of you out there, but it's also a piece that I have to paint for a friend. And um, I will show you what we're going to be doing. Come on in. Come on in, everybody. Say hi when you get here. And let me show you my double screen. So you can see what I have going on. You don't need to see all this other stuff. So today is um, April. What is today? April 20th, I think. Hello, Cheryl. Hello, Facebook user. I'm guessing you are Cindy. I'm not sure who you are. You just said hi, everyone. All right. So I am going to tear into this canvas. And this is a commissioned piece. OK, so um, but it's it's a piece, of course, that I've never painted before. And I'm going to show you the picture of it. It is a um, it's like a sunset landscape on a lake. And I'm going to show you the picture that I have. So we are going to paint um, on an 11 by 14 today. And I have a lot of leeway here in this commission piece because um she sent a couple of different photos and she said to just, you know, come up with your best, whatever you want to do. So here's my canvas. I'm going to show you what kind of canvases I like to use when I do um, commission pieces. Hello, Jean. Hello, Miss Elaine. Oh, it's so good to see you too. I'm excited to be here. All right, so this is what I'm using. I'm using um, Blick Premier Traditional Profile. It kind of has a, a, a rough surface. So I'm going to gesso it while we sit here um, before I paint it. I'm going to start doing that in a second. Um, but I want to show you this. It is, um, it doesn't say on here. Blick Premier Traditional. Okay, so I want you to notice the back of it. And I'm going to show you the difference. Let me get another one that I have. This to me is super important in a commissioned piece. I want you to notice the back of what I'm using. And this is just for my personal preference. So you can buy what's called the, the stapled back, which to me is unprofessional. OK, they are a lot cheaper, but if you're hired to do a piece, if I'm hired to do a piece, I'm not going to paint on this for the person. Um, I'm going to paint on this. This is I think it's called cradled. I'm not sure what it's called, but you see how it's all wrapped in already. It just makes the piece really a lot more um, professional. So we are going to use this today. And let me take my big face off of the camera and let y'all see what I'm going to be doing. Let me fix my screen just a little bit. All right. Why am I so crooked? Oh, there you go. Look, I'm learning all kinds of stuff here. Okay. So I'm going to gesso this with uh, oh let me show you the photo and then you can um see what i'm doing i'm so excited to do this today i've been putting it off and putting it off for so long 
and I just need to get it done. So look what I am painting. This is going to be beautiful. So I'm going to ask my students that follow me often and paint with me. What color gesso or what color uh, base surface would you use for this painting? What color base surface would you use for this painting? Yeah, isn't it pretty? It's going to be hard, but it's going to be fun. Cheryl says orange. What brand is the canvas? It is Blick. I buy all of my art supplies from Blick, except when I go to Michael's um, Hobby Lobby and I buy some of their stuff every once in a while. Orange, orange, blue. Okay, so we know my Miss Doris says orange. Michael says orange. Y'all are on point. Um, yes, the orange is going to be my gesso that I pour on here. So let me move this photo out of the way. So there's a story behind this commission piece. This is a photo from, whoa, slow down, Ginger. This is a photo from, um, from a camp that got, um, that got like, demolished in the last hurricane we had last year in Louisiana that went through Louisiana and like Lake Charles area. And um, so this is a commission piece to remember, I guess, their camp area there. Um, so let's see what I'm going to use. I'm going to use a palette knife and I'm going to spread this out. Look how pretty that is. So this is going to give the canvas a really, really nice base for my painting. I'm going to actually spread it out some more with a paper towel because I don't want it. I don't want to have to wait too long for it to dry. So I'm wetting the paper towel and I'm just kind of spreading it out a little bit more. Let me turn this heater off. I'm getting a little warm. The sun is coming out outside. I'm excited. We had snow today. Let me see y'all comments. Yellow, blue, orange, 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 orange. Yeah, I'm going with the orange. I think the orange is going to make it. So that's going to be. Let's get that little piece of hair out of there. They probably don't want that. All right. Okay. Let's do some drying really fast. And then let me show you the photo while we're waiting here. I'm going to show you this is what we're painting today. Okay, so this um, this hair dryer, let me show you this really quick. This is like a $5 hair dryer that I bought like 10 years ago. I'm not going to lie. Okay, I bought it on, um, on Amazon. It's a Revlon $5 hair dryer. And it has a button that when you turn it on, you can stop the hot air from coming out. I find that cold, like, lukewarm air works a lot better than heat on acrylics because it melts the acrylics and it makes it sticky. So um, I use this hair dryer and there's a button right here that allows you, see that? There's a button right here that allows you to stop the heat. And so it's like cold air that comes out, you know? So I really like this. I've tried the heat guns. I've tried the hot air guns. 
And I just find that for acrylic paints, because, you know, acrylic paints are like plastic. And if you put heat to them, it, it kind of melts them. So um, that's just me. I mean, everybody's different. There might be different ways to do it, but that's just the way I do it. What y'all think about that? Okay, so let's get started and let's talk about our colors. So I'm looking at this and I'm seeing, I'm going to show you um, some of these colors that I'm going to pull. I'm seeing some beautiful yellows, beautiful yellows, some beautiful oranges. So I'm going to grab the first yellow that comes to mind is a Naples yellow hue. And it is a golden open, which means it's going to be a slow drying acrylic. It's going to be a slow drying acrylic. So it's going to give me, let me back this up just a little bit. If I don't make a big mistake here, mess everything up. So it's going to give, um, it's going to give me a lot of opportunity to move the paint around because it is a slow drying. See how it says slow drying acrylics? Only Golden makes these, and it is called open. The big word open, if you see that word on it, it's almost like a um, like an oil paint consistency. And I really love these paints. So that's why I'm going to try to focus on mostly those paints today, if I have those colors. Um, blues. Let's see what I have in the Golden Open in those blues. I have titanium white. Okay, I have a, a brown that's going to work well. This is a, a really dark brown. I have my titanium white in the open. I have, this is, pa oh, Payne's Gray is going to be perfect. Okay, Payne's Gray in the open. Um, Let's see, I don't have a lot of opens, but I just started trying them and I really, really like them. Let's see, I don't see any more. Okay, here's a, oh, here's another one. I'm just seeing what I can do with these. There's another one. I don't think I'll need that one, but. Okay, I'm just grabbing all of my opens so we can look at the different, uh, here we go. Oh, there's some more. Okay, maybe I have more than I thought I did. So I must have bought one of those. There we go. Okay, I must have bought one of those big, um, like, sets of the tiny ones to try. I'm not going to use all of these, but I'm just sharing them with you. So it's a lot of purples. Let me take this picture down so y'all can see. It's a lot of purples, a lot of oranges. I'm going to stand because I feel like I'm going to do a better job at this. If I stand, um, Payne's gray, I'm probably not going to use ultramarine blue. I have two of those. I have a sap green. I probably won't use that. Van Dyke brown, probably use that. Titanium white. Um, I have a Naples yellow, but I also have an Indian yellow hue. I'm probably going to lean more towards the Naples yellow. I pulled this one, even though it's not an open. But it's a beautiful color, and I think it'll work really well in this painting. Quinacridone, nickel, gold, um, cadmium yellow, maybe, cadmium red light, maybe, alizarin crimson, mm, those are maybes. I'll have to see how we're doing. And that's another sap green. So I don't need these, but I will start with these. Okay. So let's get started on this. Let me pull up my photo for myself one more time. All right. I'm going to start with my blues. And I don't even think, I, oh yeah, I did. I pulled a Payne's Gray. I'm going to start with my blues and my grays. The Payne's Gray is a super, super, um, like almost like a navy blue. But it's definitely probably going to be too, too much of a navy. Let's see. I'm going to put this color next to it. This is called Prussian Blue. 
it's just a little bit more on the blue side. Let me show you what I have going on here. I'm also going to use some of this, um, like, it just helps your paint move better. And my white. My white is almost empty, so I'm just going to use it out of the jar. I'm just about at the bottom of this. Okay, so let me show you what I have going on. And you can get a better idea of what colors I'm going to be using here. All right. So this is the Payne's Gray. This is not the normal Payne's Gray if you follow me on a regular basis. This is not the normal Payne's Gray that I use on a regular basis. This is the Golden Open Payne's Gray. So do you see that gray tint to it? It's a lot more gray than what I'm used to using, but that's okay. I think it's going to work perfect for this painting. The other blue that I put on my palette is a Prussian blue. I don't know how to say it. I'll show it to you again. It's like a navy, a really pretty navy kind of blue. Super gorgeous. So those are my two colors that I'm going to start with. And my other stuff that I put on my palette is, is flying all over the place. So um, I'm not really interested in making it that much of a smooth painting as I am a kind of like a palette knife painting. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start. I'm kind of mixed those two blues together but I'm liking the Payne's Gray a lot more. And I'm gonna keep it really abstract, a little bit darker. So this area right here has a lot of blue in it. Let's go a little bit darker. There we go. When I paint from a photo, which if you've painted with me before, you know this, I refer to the photo a lot while I'm doing my painting. So I basically have the photo in front of me right now and I am, I am just going to town, looking at where these blue colors show up in this sunset. Okay, so let's go a little bit. I'm still just using the Payne's Gray. And white right now. And this is going to be fun. Y'all are going to be able to see how I, how I come up with this painting. Okay, because I don't know how I'm going to come up with this painting either. Let me bring me higher so you can see my face better. Okay, that's better. All right. Let me look at your comments because I'm not paying attention to your comments. Hello from Kentucky. Hi, Miss Nadine and Darlene and Carrie. Carrie, I need to respond to you. I'll take care of you. I promise. I just completely forgot about it. So, um, hi, Miss Vanessa. Thank you for the present. Thank you so much for the present. Let me tell you a little story about it. So Miss Vanessa sent me a present in the mail and it wasn't yesterday. We stopped at, you know, we have freezing temperatures here. So the chocolate was fine. It was like solid hard as a brick. So you don't have to worry about it melting. <laughs> um, and we checked the mail on our way out into town. And before, before we even like, we were probably two miles down the road. That chocolate was gone. <laughs> it was so good. Thank you so much. Brought back many memories. You are just a sweetheart. I'm so glad you came on because I probably would have forgotten to message you and thank you for it. I'm just so scatterbrained these days. Okay. Yes, we got it. We got it. <laughs> it is the best. You're exactly right. Hey, Miss Karen. 
Hello, Judy. Thank you so much for sprinkling. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's see what I'm going to do next here. Let's see. I can't tell y'all who this painting is for because um, if you're from Louisiana, you know this person and it would probably spoil the, um, it probably spoil the surprise. So I can't tell you who this is for, but this painting is going to be going to Louisiana eventually. This is a sunset from Louisiana. Okay. So now I'm going to grab um, some black and I'm going to mix it with white. So basically I'm, I'm pulling a gray. I'm getting a gray tone going here. And I'm going to use the same paintbrush. I do not even think I told y'all what paintbrush I was using. It is just a large flat brush, a number 20. I'm working on an 11 by 14 canvas. Let me bring you down just a little so you can see closer. I'm working on an 11 by 14 canvas and I'm going to take some of this black and white and I'm going to make a gray. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of this blue. But I'm really wanting it to be like a bluish gray. See that? Get some of that gray in there. Okay. And I'm going to keep it kind of like a dry brush. I want you to notice how I'm holding my paintbrush. I'm going to try to make this a tutorial at the same time that I'm painting this. Look at that color up there. I'm going to go with a... Um, I need more of a purple up here. I'm going to just start with this grayish, grayish blue. And I'm just going to slide it around. Now you can already see what these golden open paints are going to do for you. It's allowing you to have a lot more movement in your paint for a longer amount of time. I need to get some more. If y'all would see the paints I have out right here right now. Can y'all see that? I don't think y'all can. Let's get some more of that Payne's Gray. So my horizon is going to be about right here. And you know what I need? I need some red because I need to make some purple. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this golden open. It's an alizarin crimson. It's a super, super dark red. But I want it to be dark because I'm going to show you again. I'm going to show you the photo again. Hello, Miss Sandra. Um, let me show you the photo again so you can see what I'm focusing on. I want you to notice those dark grays right at the horizon line and also all the way at the top of the photo. It's actually got a little bit of a purple tint. Okay, so that's why I am picking up some of this alizarin crimson. I'm going to mix that blue that Payne's gray and the, the actual gray, the black and white that I mixed, and I'm going to add some red to it. And I'm going to make, because blue and red make purple, so I'm going to make that color. I'm going to go a little bit lighter because I feel like I'm going too dark. Let me pull up that photo again.
need to mix a little bit more. Mm, that's such a pretty color. Let's see. I feel like um, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to use a little bit of uh, a little bit of a lighter gray. So I'm need, gonna need some more white and black. Make it just a little bit lighter. darker Notice how I'm holding the paintbrush, y'all, and I'm standing really high up and I'm using the paintbrush like this. Now, normally, if I were not doing a live, I would um, I would be painting um, on an easel and I would have the I would have it standing up straight up and down. But I am hoping that when we move. We are moving, by the way, if you didn't know that. We're moving back to Louisiana. Um, when we move and I find my new art studio in my new home, haven't gotten there yet, but we're going to be searching in the next month or so. Um, I'm going to set up a different setup. So I might actually start painting like Bob Ross painted for his lives. Or he didn't do lives. He just did videos you know, like on an easel where it's straight up and yeah. So anyway, <laughs> maybe I'll have a new setup. What do y'all think? I didn't think you'd be on today with all you have going on. Is anyone else? Is anyone else on besides me? Yeah, there's 59 people on Ms. Nona. <laughs> hey, Sharon. Hey, Peggy. Hey, Robin. So glad y'all are here. Yeah, I know. I didn't I have, get that. Oops. Could you try again? No, sorry, Siri. I didn't mean for you to come on. I do have a lot to do, but you know what? It's all good. It's going to happen. I have to keep y'all in my, in my, uh, on my radar. So I have to come on live. That Y'all are my sanity. And I love to paint. I can't not paint. You know what I mean? Okay, so we're going to start getting into a little bit more on the whites. We're going to come back with some yellows on top of this. One moment. That was Siri. I don't know what she's doing. She's trying to talk to us. All right, let me grab some of my Naples yellow. I'm gonna show you the color. I'm gonna need some of this Indian yellow hue as well, because I can tell that Naples yellow, this is my Naples yellow. It's really, really dull and I want something a little bit brighter. This is a fun painting. I love painting landscapes. Love, love, love. Love, 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 love. Okay, 
don't do what I just did. I have a paintbrush full of blue paint and I just dipped it in yellow. So guess what happened to all of my paint? Not only did I make a green, but I made a poo-poo green. I don't know if I'll get kicked off of Facebook if I say that word again, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> All right, let me clean. You know what? Instead of worrying about cleaning the paintbrush, I'm going to grab another one that is very similar. Okay, and I'm just going to start with a fresh, clean paintbrush. I like to use paintbrushes that have a really long handle. It helps me stay really loose. Let me see which one I like better. I wish I had one a little bit bigger. And I do not. All right, next time I go to the store, this one is a little bigger, but it's all hard and messed up. Next time I go to the store, I need to buy a bigger paintbrush. I need to buy more like this size, but like with a really long artist handle. Man, that would that would work really well. But I like the long handles. It helps me like I hold it at the end and it just helps me move better. All right, let's try this again. We are not dipping into the blue. We're going to dip into, ooh, that color is pretty. So this is Indian Yellow Hue. It's got a really kind of almost like a neon-y yellow to it. And I'm going to use some of this too. I'm going to try it. I don't know if it's going to work, but. This is a beautiful color. It's very, very unique. This quinacridone nickel gold. It's got a pigment in it that's like an like a transparent burnt sienna. You see that? How pretty? It's like a golden color, and it's just mesmerizing to me because you can use it as a glaze. You can use it in all different kind of um, ways. So I like that color. Let's see where we're going to go with this. Ooh. Okay. Don't like the paintbrush. Paintbrush is not going to work for me. Let me tell you why. Okay. So I want you to notice when I'm doing this, see how it's making like lines. That's because this paintbrush is too stiff. It's making lines in my strokes and I do not want, see those lines it's making? The tip of the paintbrush, it's only using the tip of the paintbrush because the rest of the paintbrush is hard. And so I don't want that. So I'm gonna go back to, let's do this one. Okay, this is a really soft paintbrush. All right, and let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dip it in the water. I'm gonna come back and start over. And what I want is, I want my entire paintbrush to have paint on it, not just the tip. So let me get some of this. I want to soak that paintbrush in this gold color. Not just the tip of the paintbrush, but the whole paintbrush. And let's see if that works better. Yes, okay, no lines happening. I do not want the lines. See, I'm using the whole side. I'm not just using the tip. I'm actually kind of painting with the side of the paintbrush. Okay, so this is going to be a pretty long process because I need to get that yellowy orange to come through. Let 
me see what this orange is going to do for me. Put some more green on it. Hmm, look at that pretty color. Hmm, that's what I want. See that? Diaper green should be allowed. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Cindy. Chia pet. <laughs> All right, let's see. We have lots of layers to do here, so we're going to make it my little lines again. I don't want it to do that. Let me show y'all the photo again so y'all can kind of have an idea of where I'm going here. This is going to take multiple layers. Okay, y'all see where I'm going? It's a lot of grays and oranges and yellows and blues and purples. That's what I see. And I'm not nearly close to that yet. So this is going to be one that is going to take a while. I'm dipping into the white because I need all of this to be a little bit brighter.
next paintbrush, I'm going to go back to some blues. Actually, let's just go down here. Let's let some of this dry. I'm going to have to do more layers here. Um, let's go down here and let's get some of this. I'm not going to go solid black, even though it looks like it's solid black. I'm going to go with a charcoal -y gray because I do want to add a little bit of life to this bottom. I don't want it to be solid black. If I go solid black, then I don't have an opportunity to go any darker. Does that make sense? And I want to be able to um, have a little bit of uh, dimension down here. So... I just mixed some grays, basically just black and white together. I'm going to make a really thin line right there. And then let's use a different paintbrush. And let's go with um, a little bit of that blue again. I might need to put some more blue on my palette. Payne's Gray. Just a little bit. Hmm. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to... This is the water. Okay, so I'm going to come back with the water first and then you can see the I think I want to put that that moon in there you see how you can see a little bit of the moon I think I want to make that moon more prominent or maybe it's the sun going down it's probably the sun going down huh because it looks a lot more like a, a, a sunset to me, doesn't it? And this area is more orangey yellow. So let me grab that paintbrush. So you have three paintbrushes. I have one with the dark, I have to go back over this, the dark black, like the gray. Then I have this one that's like a blue. That's the blue tones, the bluish gray. And then I have this one that's the orange and yellow tones. And so I'm using all three of those so I don't have to keep on cleaning my paintbrush off every time I want to switch um, colors. All right, I'm going to go a little bit lighter here. Need some more white. And they're all about the same size. They're all that um, flat brush. About an inch, I guess. I probably should have it a little bit bigger. Now you see how that kind of looks like a little reflection on the water. And then I'm going to come back with the black or the dark charcoal color right in here. The paint is moving really, really well, y'all. 
that golden open really makes a big difference when you're painting something like this that needs a lot of um, blending happening in it. Have y'all ever used the golden open paint? It's not, it's not cheap. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to hide that from you. Especially colorful skies. Yeah, I still have a lot of work to do to it, but um, it is a good start for me. I like where it's going. Okay, so... I'm going to try to make this a little bit. Let's see. Um, no, you cannot buy Golden Open from Hobby Lobby. You can, uh, I buy it from Blick.com. I have an affiliate link um, on in guide one of the private Facebook group for the tribe that has my Blick affiliate link. Um, it doesn't cost you anything, but I just get a commission if you use my link. And I have to put that in the in the comments for y'all. Excuse me, let me, I keep on losing my photo. Okay. Let's go a little bit further in. No, Hobby Lobby does not have a lot of professional grade paints. They're very limited in what they carry um, beyond their own brands. They have a little bit of Liquitex. They have a little bit of Golden. Uh, very, very few things. But if you go online um, on Blick.com, you can find a lot more of the the golden products and the Liquitex products that you cannot find in the stores. Okay, so I'm going to go with a little bit, a little bit of a, um, a darker black in just a few of these areas to give it a little dimension. And then watch what I'm going to do. I want it to look like there's a little bit of um, like glow from the sun in here. So even though the photo may not have it, I think it would be a cool touch. See how you can, I'm taking off some of the black paint with a paper towel while it's wet. And because I have that um, orange background in there, it's allowing it that orange to come back through. And that orange is um, is acting like a almost like a, a, a glare from the from the sunshine coming through. See that? So just very little. You can see it, but I mean, it, I know it's not in the original photo, but I think it's it adds a really good touch. Okay, let's go back to some of this purple. So I was using alizarin crimson hue. And the Payne's gray. I ran out, so I'm going to grab some more. And the black and white. Okay, that's super red. Let's calm that down with some blue. Okay. 
Okay, much better. I do like the red. I don't feel like I have enough of that red tone in here. So let's bring in some of that. I am hardly touching with my paintbrush. I'm like just barely letting it skim across the top of um, I'm trying to soften all these edges up here. Coming back over. There we go. That's more of what I want. You see how that putting that purple on top of the yellow. So it started with the blue and then I went with the yellow and then now I'm coming back with a little bit of that purple. Very, very dry brushy. And then now you can kind of see some of that yellow through it. I'm going to do the same thing here. yellow and purple and orange and more tones and more tones i'm gonna need some more of that yellow again I don't mind the orange from the background showing through either because it kind of brings in another cool um, or warm tone into the painting, even though you don't even mean for it to. Let's get a little bit more of this. I'm trying to bring in a little bit more of that orange. and the yellow. A little bit too much paint. Now see how that's a that's kind of like a medium tone coming in. And look, if you don't like the way it's blending, take you a paper towel and just kind of blend it in yourself. Let me get a clean paper towel before I start putting purple and orange and yellow all over the whole thing. So I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm just going to dab it in the water, even though the water is a little bit dirty. It's okay. And I'm just going to... Just kind of pass it over some of the areas. If you feel like you've overdone an area that's still wet, you can always do that. And then see, it makes your makes your canvas nice and warm as well. Not warm, but you know, nice and wet. I don't know why I said warm. <laughs> warm tones.
Okay, so y'all see that um, I'm really interested in getting a little bit more of this kind of orangey. Okay, now I'm pressing hard. There we go. Try to get that flow going. I'm going to switch brushes and I'm going to dump all of those three in the water and let them sit for a while. I'll clean them up later. I'm going to grab a, um, a filbert brush. Here we go. Just a smaller filbert brush and I'm going to start dipping into this orange. And right in here. I want a little bit more defined area. Let me show you why. See what I'm working with up here? I have this really splotchy piece of cloud that I'm working with on the top right and the rest of it is like super smooth. All right, so I'm going to try to I'm going to try to recreate a little bit of this splotchy cloud here. I need some more of that gray. It's not going to be exact, but I'm going to do the best I can. You know, since this is a commission piece, let me get another paintbrush. I'm going to grab an, a, an additional filbert. And I'm going to grab some of this, uh, this grayish tone that I have here. Well, I actually need some more black in the palette. Filling up the paintbrush with like a light gray, kind of like a medium grayish purpley color.
I don't even feel like I have any paint on my paintbrush, but the more I scrub, the more it's coming off. Way too much paint. Hang on, I messed that one up. Let me get a tad, teeny, teeny bit of red and see what I can do with this. I'm looking at it needs to be more orange. It's almost like I need like a pink right there, huh? That color's driving me crazy. Is it orange or pink? It's kind of like an orangey pink. And that color, the red that I tried to use is not working. So let me try, let me try a little bit of a pinkish yellow. See what that's gonna do. Now just grab some magenta. almost like a really, really bright coral color. That's a little bit better.
See, this is no uh, one-stop shop. You know what I'm saying? This is going to take me a while to get through. I need some more yellow in here so that, see, like, I'm not liking this because you can still see the blue through the yellow. So I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to let it dry a little bit and add another layer. But the last thing I'm going to do with y'all is I'm going to find me a really, really, here's one. This is what I want. Now let me show you this kind of paintbrush. Okay. It is the super duper liner brush. It's not called that. It is a, um, it's a Da Vinci 10 dash 10 slash zero. I don't know if y'all can see that. Nova synthetics. Do y'all see how tiny this liner is? It's super, super tiny. So I am going to go with, um, this brush and I'm going to grab my black, which I don't hardly have any black on my palette, but you know what? It's okay because I don't need a lot at all. Let's see if this will work. I'm making it like an ink consistency. Oh, I'm shaking today. I don't like when I'm shaking. And I'm just dipping it. It's it's almost like I'm dipping it in. I am so shaky today. And some of these look like, um, let me zoom in so y'all can see better. Oops, sorry about that. Some of these look like they're little um, pompous grass, you know? There's one little object that I noticed in both of the photos that she gave me. It's like some kind of little box right here. And so I feel like that's an important piece of the photograph because um, it's probably something that they noticed daily. It kind of looks like a little box right here. You know, if they were sitting on their balcony and they don't get to sit on their balcony anymore because they, their camp has been blown away, then I think this little box right there, to me, I know if I were sitting on that deck, I would notice that box every time I sat on that deck and I would see it. And so I think that would be a good, like, reminder to them if I put that little... It's not really like a box. It's just like some wood. I'm going to show it to you. Do you see it on that bottom left-hand corner? It's in both of the photos that she sent me. So um, the only difference is the, um, the sunset is a little bit different. This one had a lot more uh, color in it than the other one did. And so that's why I went with this one. I still need to do some work to it. It needs more, y'all yeah, notice it needs more orange. You see how I don't have enough orange. See that? 
Yep, I need a lot more orange up there. So I'm going to have to work on that. And you know what I'm going to do? I know exactly what I'm going to do. I mean, y'all want me to show you what I'm going to do? Okay, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this stuff. It is the same exact color as the color that I was using um, quinacridone what is it called quinacridone but it's in a liquid acrylic and it is super super thin this is the only it's, it's almost like an ink consistency and I'm going to take it and I'm gonna glaze it over my painting and I'm hoping that it will add the orange that I'm looking for. So hold your breath. Yes, ma'am, it will. Look at that. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm glazing my painting. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about it in a second. Look at that, look how beautiful. Look at what that did. Oh, this makes me so excited. Now look how much closer I am to the actual, it still needs a little bit of work. I'm still gonna have to put some layers, but this stuff is magical. It is super, super magical. So, yes. Yes, please. Okay. Our pier going. Oh, it is. It's probably an old pier that's not there anymore. Great catch there. Okay. So, it still needs probably another layer of glazing. This stuff is amazing. Look at the color of it. It is, it's like a reddish, orangey, something, something, but it's really transparent. And so what I do is I use it um, with a wet paper towel. I just take a wet paper towel. I dip the paper towel in the water. And then I just, I'm telling you like just a drop of it on the paper towel. And then I just pass it over and it, it added a whole nother dimension to the yellow. Okay. I still need some work on it. I'm not happy with this area right here at all. And so, and I have a little couple of little spots in here. But if you look at, if you look at the photo, y'all let me know if this were your photo that you sent to me and I painted this for you. I'm not that far off, am I? I don't know, I need y'all opinions. I mean, I know it's not exact. It's not going to be exact, but this area needs some more work. I need, I need a little bit more orangey. Yeah, it needs a little bit more work. I might put another layer of glaze on it. That might work. I'm actually going to do it right now one more time because it's still a little bit too yellow. Let me go again. Okay, I'm going to dip it in the water. Let me show you what I'm doing. It's pretty wet, too. And I'm just going to take a very tiny bit. And I'm just passing it really, really light over those areas. It's a little bit better. Still needs a little bit more orange. But I'm going to work on it some more. This is a great start, though. I'm kind of excited about it. What do y'all think? Am I doing okay? You think they'll like it? It's more of an orangey pink, like a coral, huh? That might be what I need. Like that, that color that I pulled in right here, I'm going to need to pull in a little bit more of that. White, orange, wispy clouds. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I like yours better. <laughs> it's gorgeous. 
pretty darn close. Yeah, it still needs some work though. Right here, I feel like I need to smooth some things out a little bit. So I'm going to work on it a little bit. But um, yeah, thank y'all so much. I'm glad that I came on and painted this because I've been putting it off and putting it off. And I'm like, I got to paint this painting for my friend. <laughs> So, all right, guys, y'all have a great day. Thank you so much for hanging in with me and um, and painting with me today. It was super fun. I liked your input as well. So I will see you all later. Have a great day. Bye.